shitty watercolor. Good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Oh my god, my cat is here. Cat, this is a professional video environment, okay? None of your nonsense. Language is the pillar in the temple of philosophy, where if you knock it out, the whole thing falls down. Because you have to know about language before you can start talking about anything. It makes sense. If this was a Harry Potter book, it would be in the restricted section, I think. Who better to sum up things that are wrong in the world than Plato? He has very heartwarming, poetic, romantic things in his philosophy. But it's a bit crap, let's be honest with ourselves. What he says regarding words is that when you reference a word, you are going up into heaven or something and referencing the perfect form of what it, whatever it is that you're talking about. So if I say the word book, then Plato thinks you run off, your head runs off and goes and looks at the perfect form of a book. Um, this is not the form of a cat, this is a very imperfect cat. But then he thought a lot of weird things, like he thought that when you die, your soul goes to a star. Which feels nice, you know, you could look out at the night sky and think, oh, there's my cat. I don't think cats got to do it, oh well. But his philosophy would be very different if he was privy to the idea of evolution. Nothing will make a person cynical, like knowing that you evolved from a blob of jelly. And you haven't even gone very far beyond a blob of jelly. Because in all of his philosophies, I think, in the Republic, he relies very much on hierarchy, which you'd be a big fan of if you thought that you were a human plopped onto the earth um, alongside inferior animals. And I think this idea of hierarchy, of like natural place, would be dissolved away if you knew that we all came from the same pointless little blobs of atoms. Um, and then I think his philosophies would be much more pragmatic. And that's exactly what mine is, pragmatic. Everything else, everything other than looking at the origin of where language came from, is just wishy-washy, pointless, what feels nice to say. So where did it come from? Well, we were little atoms and molecules and then cells and then more and more complicated organisms, but really we're just blobs of jelly. And humans happen to just be blobs of jelly that have got a bit too big for their epistemological boots. I think in much the same way that you could imagine a planet millions and millions of light years away where there are winds on this planet and they form and they blow around sand or something and the sand writes out a book it just happens to have happened that way no one controls it or anything and you think that looks very complicated but there's no reason why it's there there's no interpretation of it, there's no sense behind it, it just happens. I think the same thing is true for language. This is where we bring in our good friend Mr Wittgenstein, who I kind of agree with, but he seems a bit crazy. He thinks that language only makes sense um, within the places that it's meant to make sense, the places where it is used. Yeah, like if I have my, this cushion, I say this cushion exists because I can see it, I can feel it, whatever. And so the word exists works. And then people put their clever boots on and then they think they have an idea of what existence means, like on a fundamental level. And then we get discussions about what the soul is whether it's physical or non-physical, whatever that might mean, like we have a clue what we're talking about. That is a case of philosophers going too far. Some philosophers have written some words, how exciting. And the same is true of any concept. 
um, you know, these things don't really mean anything. You have to look in the context out of which the words have arisen, and that is where they're good at. And that's why Wittgenstein says that philosophy should be about clarifying what words are, rather than taking them and running away with them and getting really confused and pretending to be clever in the process. Hello, Turmoil Hotline. Hello, Philosophy Turmoil Hotline. How can I help you? Have you been watching Hector's videos again? None of my words mean anything anymore. Can you help me? This person on the internet has just told me that nothing means anything. That we're all just blobs of mush. And my words are bad now. Well, when he says that your words aren't very good anymore, just remember that the word good also isn't good anymore at all. So, in reality, nothing has changed. Everything has been downgraded a little bit, according to an external quantifier that doesn't really exist anyway. But really, relative to your definition of good, nothing has changed, because good is now shit as well. Goodbye. Oh, thank you, Turmoil Hotline. That is really appreciated. I feel much better now. Goodbye. As the Philosophy Turmoil Hotline told us, there's no need to worry, children. No need to panic. We're all still fine. Everyone's fine. Everything still exists. That's the thing about philosophy and ideas. You can't say anything that's going to change the world. So what do we do with language now? Do we toss it aside? and commit ourselves to eternal silence. As much as I would enjoy that, it is still useful to talk. Just because it's not true doesn't mean it's not useful. And so the search for truth continues.